Franks. My name is Pyle. Not Gomer, not Ernie. Detective Pyle. Do you know why you're here? Girls from the cookie farm, right? Cookie farm? Dating place over on Dawson Street. Ethel's parent service, EPS. I call it the cookie farm. Yeah, that's it. EPS. Tell me about the girls at the cookie farm. Okay, okay. It's driving me nuts. The, the fucking nightmares. Wiggling asses, tits shaking. I can't take any more of this. You already got some shit on me anyway. Or I wouldn't be here, right? You can't blame us saps who go there. Those babes wanted it too, as long as it benefited them. Women get what women want. <laughs> They're all crazy. Well, most anyway. I mean, not all, some. Damn, I told you it's driving me nuts. It's rubbed off on me. Tell me, from the beginning. Don't you get me a lawyer or something? Yeah, you can't afford one. But first, tell me about EPS, or as you call it, the cookie farm, as soon as I return. Help yourself. I'll be right back. Okay, Mr. Franks, you are about to enlighten me on the cookie farm. Saw an ad for EPS and thought I'd check it out. There was a woman there, a fat ass old lady named Essel. Gets her jollies from eating cookies and setting up dates. She's the owner, runs the place. Was there anyone else there besides Ethel? Nope. All alone at her desk with a fucking pail of cookies. And I mean a pail like the kind kids have at the beach. No wonder she had a humongous ass, could only set updates, not get one herself. Yeah. Anyway, that's why he called the place the cookie farm. The nut house, get it? I've heard. I've people heard. get people call the nut house the cookie farm, you know? Yeah, I know, I've heard. Fat ass gives me some forms to fill out. Standard bullshit, hobbies, food I like, blah blah blah. The whole time, this pig is shoving cookies in her face nonstop and watching me through slits she calls eyes. She asked if I live alone. I said, yeah, except for Bosco, my bulldog. She shoves another cookie in her yap and says, she'll see if she can find me a date. Well, if you felt they were nuts, why'd you go back? I wasn't gonna. But the next day, fat ass calls, says, she had someone I might be interested in. Fat ass says her name is Diane. I'm expected at seven, don't be late. Seven sharp, I ring the bell. The door opens. Man, what a beauty. Big brown eyes, a low cut dress showing the nicest tits I ever seen. We went out to dinner, walked in a park, had her back around midnight. That was it? Jesus, man, I'm gonna get to it. Two days later, she calls. Invites me over for dinner and a movie. Long story short, never got to the movie. Never touched dinner, went straight to bed, fucked like rabbits. A week later, she comes to my place. Is that where you killed her? Man, you gotta stay quiet, you know? Keep asking questions, I'm gonna forget the whole thing. Oh, 
I never told her I had a dog. So she gets to the door, sees Bosco, and freezes. Makes a beeline to the bedroom. We start undressing. I throw her on the bed. She jumps up with one of Bosco's toys in her hands. What is this? She screams. Dogs are yucky. So I scream. He's clean. He wouldn't have hurt a flea. She makes a disgusted face. Starts getting dressed. Says, I better go home. Now I was horny as hell. And in no mood to hear, she's leaving because she don't like my dog. If your dog could talk, I wonder what he'd tell me. You're a shrewd one, detective. Having my own dog testify against me. Man's best friend. Too bad, huh? You already have enough on me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, right? I mean, why bother with evidence if I'm giving you everything, right? Just tying up loose ends. There aren't going to be any loose ends. Because I want you to tell the judge I cooperated. You're going to mention it, right? Of course, Mr. Franks. Wrap my fingers around Diane's throat. Squeeze until she doesn't make a peep. I let go, she drops. I lay down next to her. We talked. I mean, I talk, she just listens. It was nice. Told her all about Bosco ever since he was a pup. Never heard a soul. A week later, Fat Ass sends me another name. Darlene. Wait a minute. If she was dead, what did you do with the body? Like I said, I talked. She listened. She was dead. Why are you asking me all this? I thought you had all this. No, oh, yeah, yeah. We do, we do. We just need to verify things, though. Right, because any Yahoo could read it in the papers and claim responsibility, right? Yeah, that's it. A fellow can't just walk in and admit to something. He's got to prove what he's saying. So let me get back to proving myself. Darlene and I went to the movies. Kissed some, went for pizza. Then back to my place for drinks. Bosco greets us at the door. She freezes. Says, I'm a cat person. Dogs are dirty. I laugh and say, I like pussy too, but I have a dog. A clean dog. She makes a disgusted face. Then heads for the door. Says, what's wrong with you? I like dogs, so there's something wrong with me? So I smack her on the noggin. She drops to the floor. And Bosco started licking her face. Isn't that ironic, Detective? The very thing making her dirty was trying to make her feel better. Did it? Or is that when you killed her? Man, you gotta stop asking questions. I'm gonna forget the whole thing, understand? She was still out. So I stripped her. Took my pleasure. She woke up, started screaming bloody murder. Man, she had some lungs under those tits. I was afraid a neighbor might hear. So I ran into the kitchen, grabbed a meat cleaver. That shut her up quick. Messy as hell though, I had to tear out the carpets. I was thinking to get a new one, maybe. Stay focused on the facts, please. Right. Okay, so you meet these two women through the cookie farm. Neither one of them like your dog. Bosco. Yeah, Bosco. Okay, tell me. Are there any more women? Two. Gina, hot little blonde. And Maureen, a great kisser. And neither liked Bosco. No, they did. Except Gina was a tease. She gave me a little tit and then said no more. She had to know someone for a while first. Maureen fucked me. And then she decided I was in her cup of tea. Now you know neither of those excuses was gonna fly with me. 
Cleaver time? Cleaver time. Where are they? The bodies. Listen, detective. I'm unemployed. Food is expensive. And I was in about Good to... Christ, you ate them? What? Damn no, man. That's sick. Alvo costs more than I can fit in the budget. I am getting too old to hear how maniacs want to play God with other people's lives without an iota of responsibility or regret. But I am taking responsibility. I'm smart enough to know that I got caught and I can get leniency by cooperating. Smart? If you were smart, you would have shut the fuck up when you first came in here. I can't believe everything you told me. I mean, we had you come in here on a noise complaint. A what? A noise complaint? About what? Here's a hint, Hotshot. Woof! Woof! Yeah, a neighbor complained. A barking dog. Nothing more. Wait a minute. Detectives are animal control now? Hey, when the animal control officer is out sick, the department fills in. Now, instead of sending a car for you, I suggested that you come in. You did. When I asked you if you knew anything about why you were here, you gave us substantial information on a missing persons case that my partner and I have been working on. Women connected to EPS. Now, I never suggested, hinted, or brought up anything to you about EPS. You're the one that got the heart on reliving the deed, and you're the one who fucked up. You tricked me, you motherfucker! Uh, Harris! This is my partner. Detective Harris. Did you get everything? Sure did. That microphone can pick up a mouse fart. What microphone? In there, with the video camera. Up. Now we'll get you that lawyer. And I will personally see to it that your dog spend the rest of his life in a normal household, eating normal food. Can't say as much about you, though. You're under arrest, Mr. Franks. Four counts of murder. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. If you can't afford it, anyone will be afforded. Thank mm -hmm. you.